Next year, without any links with faith. Blessing from the prophet Daniel. In those days, there was a man that dwelt in Babylon, Susanna, the daughter of Hilkiah, a very beautiful woman, and one that feared God. For her parents, being just, had instructed their daughter according to the law of Moses. Now Joachim was very rich, and had an orchard near his house. And the Jews resorted to him, because he was the most honorable of them all. And there were two of the ancients of the people appointed judges that year, of whom the Lord said, Iniquity came out from Babylon, from the ancient judges that seemed to govern the people. These men frequented the house of Joachim, and all that had any matters of judgment came to them. And when the people departed away at noon, and the old men saw her going in every day, and walking, and they were inflamed with lust towards her, and they perverted their own mind, and turned away their eyes that they might not look unto heaven, nor remember just judgments. And it fell out, as they watched a fit day, she went in on a time, as yesterday and the day before, with two maids only, and was desirous to wash herself in the orchard. For it was hot weather, and there was nobody there, but the two old men that had hid themselves, and were beholding her. So she said to her maids, Bring me oil and washing bowls, and shut the door of the orchard, that I may wash me. Now when the maids were gone forth, the two elders arose, and ran to her, and said, Behold, the doors of the orchard are shut, and nobody seeth us, and we are in love with thee. Wherefore, consent to us, and lie with us. But if thou wilt not, we will bear witness against thee, that a young man was with thee, and therefore thou didst send away thy maids from thee. Susanna sighed, and said, I am straitened on every side, for if I do this thing, it is death to me, and if I do it not, I shall not escape your hands. But it is better for me to fall into your hands without doing it, than to sin in the sight of the Lord. With that Susanna cried out with a loud voice, and the elders also cried out against her. And one of them ran to the door of the orchard and opened it. So when the servants of the house heard the cry in the orchard, they rushed in by the back door to see what was the matter. But after the old men had spoken, the servants were greatly ashamed, for never had there been any such words said of Susanna. And on the next day, when the people were come to Joachim, her husband, the two elders also came, full of wicked device against Susanna, to put her to death. And they said before the people, Send to Susanna, daughter of Helkias, the wife of Joachim. And presently they sent. And she came with her parents and children and all her kindred. Therefore her friends and all her acquaintances wept. But the two elders, rising up in the midst of the people, laid their hands upon her head. And she, weeping, looked up to heaven, for her heart had confidence in the Lord. And the elders said, As we walked in the orchard alone, this woman came in with two maids, and shut the doors of the orchard, and sent away the maids from her. Then a young man that was with there, that was there, hid, came to her, and lay with her. But we that were in the corner of the orchard, seeing this wickedness, ran up to them, and we saw them lie together. And we, him indeed, we could not take, because he was stronger than us, and opened the doors, opening the doors he left out. But having taken this woman, we asked who the young man was, but she would not tell us. Of this we think we are witnesses. The multitude believed them as the elders and the judges of the people, and they condemned her to death. Then Susanna cried out with a loud voice, and said, O eternal God, who knowest hidden things, who knowest all things before they come to pass, thou knowest that they have borne false witness against me. And behold, I must die, whereas I have done none of these things which these men have maliciously forged against me. And the Lord heard her voice. And when she was led to be put to death, the Lord raised up the Holy Spirit of a young boy, whose name was Daniel. And he cried out with a loud voice, I am clear of the, from the blood of this woman. Then all the people, turning themselves towards him, said, What meanest this word that thou hast spoken? But he, standing in the midst of them, said, Are ye so foolish, ye children of Israel, that without examination or knowledge of the truth you have condemned a daughter of Israel? Return to judgment, for they have borne false witness against her. So all the people turned again in haste. And Daniel said to them, Separate these two far from one another, and I will examine them. So when they were put asunder one from the other, he called one of them, and said to him, O thou that art gro grown old in evil days, now are thy sins come out, which thou hast committed before, in judging unjust judgments, oppressing the innocent, and letting the guilty to go free. Whereas the Lord saith, 
the innocent and the just thou shalt not kill. Now when, if thou sawest her, tell me under what tree thou sawest them conversing together. He said, Under a mastic tree. And Daniel said, Well hast thou lied against thine own head. For behold, the angel of God, having received the sentence of him, shall cut thee in two. And having put him aside, he commanded that the other should come. And he said to him, O thou seed of Canaan, and not of Judah, be beauty hath deceived thee, and lust hath perverted thy heart. Thus did you do to the daughters of Israel, and they for fear converse with you. But a daughter of Judah would not abide your wickedness. Now therefore tell me, under what tree didst thou take them conversing together? And he answered, Under a holm tree. And Daniel said to him, Well hast thou lied against thy own head, for the angel of the Lord waiteth for the sword to cut thee in two and to destroy you. With that all the assembly cried out with a loud voice, and they blessed God who saveth them that trust in him. And they rose up against the two elders, for Daniel had convicted them of false witness by their own mouth. And they did to him, to them, as they had maliciously dealt against their neighbor. And they put them to death, and innocent blood was saved in that day. In the chintas of Primans, the Dimitans not sealed, he chintay domino. In the chintan that used to none of the visual. Hum ergo sibidisi eo. Dic sud qua orbora, videris eos colo quanta sibi. Viae sub shino. Ad the Dixie Dalton Daniel, thirty mundigus says in capitu. Ece enum angelus ei. A chapter sententia aveo. Shinda te amino. Then a moto eo usi venere. Allium et Dixidei, Semen Canaan ter Nunduda, Species de Tepite, Ecovis Punicientia Subvertit Cartum, Sicla Tevatis Viabus Israel, et Ile Timentes Ocabantur Hobbies, Set Filia Iuda non sustinuit iniquitatum Vespam, Nungero Dignici, Subqua Ormore, Comprehenderes Eos Loquentes Sibi, Qui Ait Subrino, Dixidatum E. Daniel, Recte mentitus est et tu in capitum, manet enum angelus domini gladia labens, ut ut sacred sacred te medium, et interficiat vos. Ex amavit et eca quae omnis cetus vos remind et et serum deum, vi salvat presperantes in se. Et consurrex servant, et versus duos seniores, Convitura enum eos Daniel ex ore suo falsum dixisi testimonium. Que cerum que ei sicut male o cerum versus proximum, in vicerum do eos et salvatus est sanguis in oxius in vidae ira. Si ambulum in medium para mortis non vede mala con monium tu mecumer, domine, virgo tu abacu tuus, ipsum ne consolatas sum. Sequentia Sancti Evangelii Secundi Vivani In il tempo, Rexit Iesus in Monte Moliveti, et iloculo hitrum veni in templum, et omnes populus veni adeo, et sedens doceva eos, aducunt et eutem scribe, et farasei mulierum in el loterio de prehensam, et saturum eo in medio, et dixero dei magister, Eg mulier modo de prehensa es in auditorio. In legi autem oeses mandavit nobis uius modi lapidari. Tiergo quid dicis, o cautem vicebant in tantas eum, ut posent acusare eum. Jesus adament dinan se de arsum digito scribebat in terra. Cum ergo preser preser bravarent interrogantes eum, erexit se et dixit ei, qui sine peccato es vestrum, primus in ilum lapidem mitae. Dictum zin genan sed describebat in terra. Audientes autem unus post unum exibant, 
principientes a senioribus et rei mansi solus Jesus, et mulier in medio stans. Religions autem se Jesus dixirei, mulier ubi sunt qui te accusavam. Nemo te gonadit. Qui que dixit, nemo domine, dixit, autem Jesus, nec ego te condenabo, vadi ad jam antrios no repetare. Susanna Saturday, a few considerations here from the Father and the Son of the Holy to Men. We read today the Tuesday Saturday with this Holy Saturday is in the season of Lent, and this Saturday is a Saturday of Susanna. And that uh, that is a great miracle of Susanna took place when Daniel was a child, and several things happened because of this miracle. One of them was very much unforeseen. And that is the salvation of Daniel. We have the famous story today of the saving of Susanna. And Daniel did not know on this day as a young boy that in fact he saved himself. And so and remember that God's ways are not our ways. And our ways are not God's ways. But what the scripture itself says about this chapter in the, in the, of the 13 of the book of Daniel. Is that God allowed this great miracle to happen in order that all might know that God hears the prayers of those who weep and cry to him for help, and that those who are in great need to always be cared for by him. And here Susanna lived an upright life. She was very perfect, very pure, and most beautiful. And she was very faithful to her husband, Joachim. But, and her virtue was known to all the people of this part of Israel. But there were two wicked judges. And these two wicked judges, of course, they were very wicked judges. One of them used to oppress and kill, and the other was devoted to impurity. And both of them were impure. But one used to, used to oppress the innocent and, and use his, his power to get money and, and to experience the joy of making innocent people suffer. And the other used to also make the innocent suffer and look mainly for his own pleasure, his own impure pleasure. In both, extremely wicked, and they were old. Old because they had, they, had, they had developed this habit in youth and they grew old in sin. And they were very used to committing these sins. And every day they did these kinds of sins. Every day they oppressed the wicked, for many, many, oppressed the innocent for many, many years. Every day they, did, they, they searched for ways to be impure for many, many years. And they had gotten themselves into a position of authority. They were judges amongst the people. And amongst not just the people, but the people of God, the true religion of the Jews, they belonged to that true religion. They were judges amongst the people, and therefore they had great power. And because they were two judges, they could work together, so that one judge could easily cover the behind and the back of the other judge, and therefore there was no way to fight against them. But what happened? One day, they attacked the innocent Susanna. One day, they went after another girl. And Daniel himself would say during this, during his trial, he was a 12-year-old boy at the time, and the little boy Daniel said, You wicked old man, many times you did this same trick with the women of Israel. And they, for fear, decided to lie and sin with you in order to save their lives. But then you tried it with a girl of Judah. You tried it with a daughter of Judah. And she would not participate in your sin. This you thought was another day and another sin. And remember, we are reminded also of the day of judgment that came upon Sodom and Gomorrah. The sacred scripture tells us that the morning that Sodom ended up in fire, and the morning that Gomorrah ended up in fire and destruction, after so many years and so immersed in sin, not only immersed in sin, but their final great sin, which cannot be forgotten, is that the king of Sodom and the king of Gomorrah were captured by the five kings. 
And they, the, the, the four kings. The four kings went and captured the five kings, and two of them were the kings of Sodom and the kings of Gomorrah. And they were brought into captivity. And for the sake of Lot, because of one man who was the nephew of Abraham, Abraham took his servants. And Abraham, an old man who had never fought a battle in his life, took out a sword. And he got his servants, who were not trained soldiers, and he went after five kings that had defeated four kings in battle. And what did what was it that moved Abraham? It was his faith, his complete confidence in God, and in, certainly his advisors would have said four kings fought against the five kings, the four armies fought against the five armies, and the four armies lost, and they were gathered into captivity. But Abraham said, my nephew Lot is innocent and he has been dragged into captivity along with the king of Sodom and the king of Gomorrah and the king of the other three cities. And I will go and will save them. And Abraham took his servants. They had to go look for swords. Maybe they didn't all have swords. They took their, their, they took their, their the, 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 the weapons that would often be used by farmers. They took pitchforks. They took hammers and they took sledgehammers and they took whatever swords they could find and they went into battle. And Abraham, for the sake of saving his, his innocent nephew Lot, destroyed the five kings and he fought a great battle in the night and he attacked them boldly in the night. And he was, he was, he was, he was 90 something years old. He's in his late 80s or 90 years old. He was an old man when he went into this battle and he went into the battle and he won with great confidence and destroyed the enemies of God. And what happened to the king of Sodom and the king of Gomorrah? And the people of Sodom and the people of Gomorrah, they realized God has saved us. Through the instrument of this, this shepherd, through his servants, through his bravery, he, God has saved us and they were not grateful. And they did not repent. And then they saw Melchizedek come. Consider the situation of Melchizedek. Melchizedek came to offer the clean sacrifice. It is called the clean oblation. When, I, when Melchizedek offered that clean oblation, who attended that mass? We call them today Sodomites. They were the people of Sodom and the people of Gomorrah. The men of Sodom and the men of Gomorrah, they were at that mass. They had just been released by the great battle of Abraham. Whom did Abraham save? He saved the people of Sodom, and he saved the people of Gomorrah, and he fought a battle in the middle of the night when no one even asked for him to come. He saw that there was a need. He saw that his innocent, his innocent nephew Lot was captured. There were five kings that had captured him in battle, and he went and destroyed them. And then he realized the great power of God with just a few servants. He was a rich man. He had maybe several hundred servants. He didn't have thousands. They had several hundred, and they went with boldness into battle. And they followed the old man Abraham in his first battle, and he defeated the enemies of God. He wiped them out, and he realized this victory came by the power of God, by the blessing of God. And then Melchizedek came, the king of peace, having neither beginning of days nor end of life. And Melchizedek offered a sacrifice of bread and wine. He did not offer a bloody sacrifice. He offered an unbloody sacrifice. And the people of Sodom attended the sacrifice. The first symbol of the holy sacrifice of the Mass of the New Testament was not attended by the good. It was attended by the evil. And they were forgiven their sins. And they were given an opportunity to repent. And they were given an opportunity to change their ways. And they did not change them. The Sodomites had been Sodomites for a long time. The Gamorites had the same sin, and they committed been Gamorites for a long time. But they were saved by God, saved by Abraham, and the king of peace came, who had neither beginning of days nor end of life, signifying the perfection of the New Testament sacrifice, and there, after a great battle, one miraculously, he offered the sacrifice. And then those people were not grateful. And those people did not repent. And they were there at the first symbol of the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass. 
1,000, 2,000, almost 2,000 years before that first mass of Christ on Calvary, about 1,900 years before the birth of Christ is when this miracle happened. They went back to Sodom, they went back to Gomorrah, and they did not repent. And therefore, in a short period of time, the wrath of God came down and destroyed Sodom and destroyed Gomorrah. Just like later on in the life of Daniel. Balthazar was guilty of all kinds of sins. He also was impure. He also was into thievery. He also worshipped his own self. But then what did he do? He committed the sin of sacrilege. And he took the vessels that were used in the holy uh, sacrifice of the Jewish worship of the Old Testament, and he used them for drinking. And that night came a handwriting on the wall, and there came three words, Mane, Tekel, Fares. Counted, weighed, divided. He did not know what those words meant. But he knew that they were bad. He knew they were terrifying. He knew that they meant judgment. And he knew that they were for himself. And therefore he was petrified and he shook his knees. And he asked for someone to interpret those words. And the wise men of, ba of Babylon could not interpret it. But he remembered the old Daniel, the Daniel that performed the miracle of Susanna at 12 years old, many years before. He is now in his 80s. He's now 90 years old, and he's still alive. And the old man, Daniel, he calls him up. Maybe Daniel can interpret these words, and he interpreted them. And that night, Balthazar was killed. And the next morning, his kingdom was wiped out. It was a night of partying before he died and went to judgment. And on the day of Sodom and Gomorrah's destruction, the scripture tells us, the sun rose that morning, and it was bright. No worry about Christ's judgment coming during a snowstorm. No worry about it coming during a thunderstorm. It is going to come when the sun is bright. It is going to come on an ordinary day. And Christ himself made that very clear when he referred to the judgment that will come upon us at the ending of the world. He says it will be as in the days of Noah. And on the Noah's day, it was not a rainy day. They did not even have rain in those days. It was another sunshiny day. It was another beautiful day. And then the rain came. And it rained for 40 days and 40 nights. And the judgment of God came on a sunshiny day. And this is the day it was for these two judges. It was just another murder. Just another act of impurity. Just another adultery. Just another theft. Just another unjust judgment. They had that. It was just another day for them. There was nothing special about this day for these two wicked judges, except this would be the day that the judges would be judged. This would be the day when the judges would go to death. If only they knew, they would have changed their behavior. They would have changed their plans. And the Lord Jesus Christ himself said, You know not the day nor the hour when the Son of Man is going to come. We don't know the day or the hour, but he will come. And the miracle of Susanna was given to us to show us that God always watches those that weep. God always watches those that are innocent. God always watches those that love him, and he will protect them. Many today, for instance, are very terrified of this coronavirus. Virus that... Some were trying to solve by buying Lysol, because it says Lysol kills the coronavirus. The other day, the seminarians were traveling in the, to the store, and a lady was trying to solve the coronavirus problem with her child by spraying Lysol in the face. So the child was breathing in Lysol. Drink Lysol. Breathe in Lysol. And a child may not be alive today, but the child doesn't have the virus. Now the fact is, they are going to use Lysol. The president has made a special decree that there will be hand cleaner that is going to be produced by factories to make more hand cleaner available to everyone. We're going to give out hand cleaner. But 800 years ago, the Blessed Virgin Mary appeared to St. Simon Stock. And she had a different solution. She said, where are the scapular? Mm -hmm. Those who die wearing the scapular 
that they will not lose their souls. And the scapular has power against plagues and pestilence. It has power against many things. So many things. One time a sailor on the ship in World War II, an American sailor, was standing next to, he was standing next to his gun, standing on the ship, and out game came a Japanese kamikaze pilot, and the kamikaze pilot hit the ship right next to him, blew the ship to smithereens, didn't sink the ship, but you could sit on the top of the ship, killed about 150 sailors, something like that, burned and maimed all of them, many of them, and he was not harmed. He had on his scapular. It's good with burns. It's good with pestilence. It's the best thing to die in. Maybe instead of handing out hand cleaner, we should be handing out scapulars. The other thing to remember is this. That when we are protected by physical things, our Lord says in the book of wisdom, that which you shall be slain by that which you feared, it shall come upon you. You want to always be clean, but your soul is not clean. You're going to be safe. In order to be safe, the women of Israel tried to be safe. And therefore, to keep their health, they decided to be impure. To keep their health, they decided to sleep with the two judges. One of the reports I heard on the, on the news just yesterday that there was a girl who was very well trained and uh, she's an engineer of some kind and she was in the South America and she was not in South America, not, not in some country, I forget if it was South America or elsewhere. And uh, because of this coronavirus, they're locking things down and she's not able to make any money. And in order to save herself, this well trained woman, she had to resort to prostitution. And what did Daniel say today? Daniel said, You tried to get the women of Israel, the ten tribes, you tried to get them, and they slept with you, they sinned with you to save their lives. We don't even know those women's names. They are all dead. They are all gone. They are all forgotten. But there was one girl named Susanna. And Susanna, the wicked men came to her, and they said, Susanna, sin with us. And Susanna refused. And because she refused, what did she say when she refused? Susanna said, If I do not sin with you, I shall not escape your hands. But if I commit this sin, it is death to me. She did not consider the judges a danger to her life. But she did consider mortal sin the end of her life. And therefore she said, If I do not commit this sin with you, you two old, ugly, evil, wicked men, it is, I shall not escape your hands. And whatever wickedness you choose to do, I will not escape. But if I do this thing, it is death to me. And therefore she cried out with a loud voice. She did not wait. She cried out with a loud voice. And she screamed, and immediately the two judges were afraid that the servants would come in and see the judges with her. And therefore one judge ran to the door because he was smart. And he opened up the gate and opened it and ran back. And the servants came in and they saw the two judges and they saw Susanna and they saw the open gate. And the old judge came back panting and he said, there was a young man and he was committing adultery with Susanna. And we saw it, and we went to apprehend the man, but we are old and feeble, and he was young and strong, and he ran out the gates. See, the gate is open. You're right, the gate is open. And you are the two most wicked men I've ever met in my life. And I know of three different girls, and you did that too, and I know of ten different guys that you murdered, and I know that you're the most vile human beings on earth, called judges. Have times changed? Have they changed the requirements to become a judge? Have they changed the requirements when it comes to become a leader of society? Not much. And I know Susanna, and she is beautiful, and she is a wonderful wife, and she is a wonderful mother, and she's always innocent, and she's filled with goodness, and she's good to the poor, and she's never done wrong in her life. Maybe she is guilty. I don't know, I wasn't there. And after all, the door was open. And there were two witnesses. 
two of the biggest scumbags on the planet. There were two witnesses. What am I going to do? Poor Susanna. She's probably innocent. But who am I to judge? And it wasn't known. They were right about that. It is not for us to judge. God judges. The judges judged that day. The people judged that day. And God judged that day. Which judgment had its way? Times have never changed. Right now, there are wicked men. They say this coronavirus is just a normal virus in some ways, man-made virus. Some have died from it. If it's a man-made virus designed to kill those that have designed that virus, they are laughing. And one day, it will be another day of laughter for them. One day, it will be another day of wickedness for them. And that day shall be the day of their judgment. We need not worry about that. God will take care of the judgment of evil men in his own time. God is the one who shall do the judgment. What is it that we must do? Have confidence in God, confidence in our holy faith, and confidence in the strong, best way to prepare for battle. What's the best way to prepare for battle? Live in sanctifying grace. There isn't any better way to prepare. Live an innocent life. Live with the knowledge of God in the mind, the love of God in the heart, and every God everywhere in our passions and in our actions. That life is well lived. And when we live that way, whatever day of judgment comes, it's fine. Because that day will be a day in which we shall be judged sweetly. And those that love not God shall be judged most harshly. Now the Sodomites and the Gamorites, they were sinners of impurity for a long time. But then God gave them a chance to repent. And he made Melchizedek. The fathers tell us that Melchizedek was most likely an angel. Because it says in the sacred scripture, he had no beginning of days. He was not born. He had no end of life. He was the king of peace. And the mass that he celebrated was a symbol of a new sacrifice, which Malachi tells us there shall be no setting of the sun upon this sacrifice. And the sacrifice is celebrated everywhere in the world. The true sacrifice of the mass. And they've taken it away from us on this weekend. Many souls do not go to mass because they're afraid of a virus. It's a very good thing that Pope Francis has wisely decreed the shutting down of all new masses. If he's very wise, he'll never turn them on again. Just keep them shut down from now until forever. Because these masses are sacrilegious. These masses are displeasing to God. So leave them shut down. Good decision of the Pope. So he's not all that bad. Now the fact is that we are here for Christ and it is the holy faith that holds us together. However, what about the true mass? Remember that the greatest act of sacrifice in the Old Testament, the most beautiful act of sacrifice, was when Abraham had Melchizedek offer a sacrifice. And what was it offered for? In thanksgiving for the Sodomites being saved from the five kings. It was a mass of thanksgiving, a symbol of the mass. It was a sacrifice, an unbloody sacrifice, and a symbol of the sacrifice of the New Testament made for those that are ungrateful, made for those that did not repent, and those people at that sacrifice returned back to Sodom, and very quickly they returned back to their sin. And on the day of uh, one particular day, angels came into the city, and they saw an angel in Melchizedek. And when they saw the angel Melchizedek, they said, Melchizedek, we are, whole, we are so holy, we love to be at your sacrifice, because you just saved us from the five kings. Later on, they would see two angels walk into the city of Sodom, and they would come to the house of Lot and say, Give these young men to us, because they were, they were as looking as young, handsome men, and we will sin with them. That was their final desire, for they sinned every day, and they were going to sin yet another day. It didn't get their wish. But then they walked out of the city, Many people leave the city every day. But Lot left the city with his wife. He left with his children. He left with them, with the two angels. And God said, the angel said, do not look back. Well, Lot did look back. Lot's wife did look back. And she would turn into a pillar of salt. And that was the end of Lot's wife. Because she looked back. We must remember that 
There have always been wicked men in the world, and they have always oppressed the innocent. But the time when God hears the prayers of the innocent, and God will protect those that truly love him, and we must have confidence in his protection, and we must recognize that it is God that is the answer, the Holy Mother of God that is the answer, and maybe because of a crisis like this, which is even a contrived crisis, to see how powerful the state is to control everyone, but maybe even a crisis like this will be a means for the Pope to say, I'm going to consecrate Russia to Macaulay and Mary and finally obey heaven. He won't do it because he loves, but he might do it because he fears. And the fact is, God's will will be accomplished in the day that he wishes and as he wishes. And on this day, these two wicked judges thought it was another day. And then what happened? Susanna cried. O oh Lord, I am innocent, and must I go to death because of these wicked men? And her cry climbed to heaven. There are two things that will bring an end to this crisis. The crisis of the church and the crisis that we are in. And one of them is that there is the prayer of ten just men. Remember when Sodom was about to be destroyed, Adam said, God said to Abraham, I'm going to destroy the city. And Abraham said, let us not destroy the city. If there be a hundred just men in Sodom and Gomorrah and the other four cities, will you not destroy the city? Three cities? No, I won't. How about 90, 80, 70, 60? And he stopped at 10. And then Abraham stopped his bidding. But if there were 10 just men, he would not destroy the city of Sodom. Are there 10 just men? One day it will go down to nine, and then fire comes down from heaven. Let there be ten just men. Out of four cities, out of several hundreds of thousands of people, can we not be one of those ten just men? And we pray to God, and we love God, and we live an innocent life. Now on the day of Susanna, there was one just, and that was Susanna. And she was filled with the love of God, and she was filled with innocence, and these wicked judges were going to put her to death, and Susanna said she cried to heaven, and God heard her prayer, and his spirit moved in an innocent boy named Daniel. And Daniel did not know he had just saved his own life. He had no idea there was a crisis around the corner. He was a little boy. He did not know there was going to be an invasion of Israel in only a short time, and that King Nebuchadnezzar was going to come and tear down the temple of Jerusalem and destroy it. He didn't know the armies of the, of the Babylonians were going to come and destroy Israel. He didn't know the Babylonian Israelis were going to be taken into captivity. He didn't know that. All he knew was, Susanna is innocent. And he stood up. And he said, why do you judge so lightly without looking at the evidence? You are so listening to these foolish, wicked men. You're not looking at the evidence. Go to a just judgment. And the people ran with haste. And they put the boy Daniel on a rock. And the boy Daniel said, I will judge them. Separate these two wicked men. Separate these two fools. And he judged them. And they were found guilty by their own mouth. And innocent blood was saved in that day. God can save innocent blood on any day. He can save innocent blood in the most wicked of places, at the most wicked of times. And when the word came to Nebuchadnezzar. But when Nebuchadnezzar came and conquered the city of the land of Israel, he sent his servants out. And he said, I want you to find any special cases. Find young men that are strong, young men that are brave, young men that are great athletes. Find anyone that has done any great thing amongst young boys and bring them back. And I will put these boys in my court and we will raise them as the best of our own boys because I want representatives of all the world in my court in Babylon. Find me some good boys. And they went around and heard about this boy named Daniel who had saved Susanna. And they said, let us find this boy. And they went to him and they said, oh, there is this young boy. He was so brave. He saved Susanna. And they took him aside. Do you have any friends? I've got three friends. Cedrach, Mizak, and Abednego. Well, bring them with you. Get some boy boys that are your friends and bring them with you. And he brought them with him. And they went over to Babylon. And three of his friends were thrown in a fiery furnace. But the fire didn't burn them. And his, boy, his friends and he were told, the little boys, you must eat the pagan meats. And they said, no, we're not going to eat the pagan meats. And the, and, the, and the cook in charge of them said, 
please eat them because I'm in charge of you. And if you get skinny and you aren't strong, I'm going to be killed. And they, Daniel said, don't worry about it. Just feed us bread, says the other boys, and see us. The, the Jewish meals and didn't feed them the pagan meats and sure enough the boys became fairer and stronger than the others and the man in charge of them was not put to death and Daniel saved the pagan and Daniel saved Susanna and Daniel saved uh, the, uh, interpreted the dreams of Nebuchadnezzar and Daniel maintained his wisdom at the end of his days and Daniel did not know that that day he stood up on that rock that he was saving his own self and we must understand that whenever we stand for God, and whenever we maintain our innocence before God, and whenever we don't turn to the horrible vice of impurity and do other wicked things, we save ourselves. Now so many people are being locked up in their rooms and locked up in their houses. And unfortunately, what happens when this happens? So many young men, and also ladies, resort to pornography, and they resort to all kinds of impurity, and they turn to all kinds of sins inside of the homes. Let there be innocence, and let there be a combat against the vice of impurity. Let there be a standing for purity. Let there be truth. Let there be a victory over impurity, and the virus shall be defeated, and the pestilence will be defeated, and the cry of the innocent will go up into heaven, and there shall be a reprieve in this crisis. Let there be a love of God. Let there be the truth. Let there be that that is the answer to the coronavirus and the answer to the problem of closing down our churches. We now find that's something we've known to be the case of the law. Anyway, we haven't yet made it pure law, but the time is coming when they will maybe, maybe we'll never be able to go to church again. Maybe they'll lock us out of our churches. Maybe we'll be Catholics be arrested in the homes again. It's happened so many times in the history of our church. But let us behold our faith, and let the faith never be let go of, let go of. And let us persevere in our holy faith, and God will bless us, and he will bring the victory. And what happened the last time when the Romans tried to bring an end to the Catholic Church by killing all the Catholics, by capturing their homes, by stopping all their worship? The blood of Christians became, the, the blood of martyrs became the seed of Christians, and it purified the whole Roman civilization, and it became a Roman Catholic Church. We must understand that innocence and truth, the love of God, the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Holy Scapular, these things are the answer to the crises. And also don't forget about the St. Benedict Medal. Nothing because today is the day it's always good to have a St. Benedict Medal attached to your scapular. St. Benedict also drives away the devil. And St. Benedict's feast day is today, one of the great fathers of Christendom. Nothing until, so remember that but there is no Christian without the great St. Benedict. But in any case, let us follow the example of Susanna, follow the example of Daniel, and God will bless us. He'll take care of us. He'll get us through all difficulties, whichever they are, and then and then, and then, and then let's persevere in innocence and stay against the whole vice of impurity, because the innocent shall uh, bear away the kingdom of, of, of heaven, shall carry it, and, and, and shall, be, shall be blessed by God and protected by God. Let me bless you all. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost.